Okay, so we just went over the agenda. It is Tuesday, May 17th. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, tomorrow morning, there's a banking workshop. So I'm going to leave these slides and go into our Google Classroom stream. So here's the stream. This is the public message board right here. So last week I posted uh, some typing exercises that everybody could try. And here I've posted the link to a banking workshop tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Now, uh, Guadalupe, Fernanda, uh, Maravat, I, I believe you've uh, done this before. It's hosted by First National Bank. Um, I'm sorry, First Republic Bank. And um, Inmar, were you at the last banking workshop? Tomorrow. I said, Tomorrow. were you at the, were you, I'm asking a question about the past. Were you, were, were you at the last banking workshop that we had? The last one this year, no, but I received okay. some, some class on uh, when I was on Laboratory Center. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you're familiar with it. Great, great, great. Okay. So yes, if you are free tomorrow morning at 1030, this uh, is for all of the upper level students. So both my level five and level six classes are invited uh, to this one at 1030 a.m. Uh, tomorrow. So, and I'm also, I'm going to uh, post this on the WhatsApp group as well. So it's general information about um, banking, how to access services, various types of investments, things like that. Um, that's it. Uh, any questions about that? No, George. Negative. I understand. All right. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So. Let's scroll down here, and I want everybody to play with the Google Classroom stream. So we finished the last class uh, with typing games. And I gave everyone a different game to uh, practice with their typing skills. But what I want to practice now with everybody is how to share comments on the stream. So this is a public message board, that means, it's not like an assignment where you send your writing to me and me alone, and I give you individual comments. This is uh, for you to share with everybody, just like you're, just like here, where everybody we can hear each other. So, I would like everyone to think for a minute about the typing exercises that we did and your observations. But first, we can talk about them. Uh, Fernando, would you like to begin? You, were, you, you seem to be very vocal about the typing exercises last week. Yes, in the last class, I, <laughs> I, I typed again, and the Francelis too, and the, which, the group. Which exercises did you do? I'll, I'll open up the page here. I'll make this uh, a little bit bigger. Cayman, Cayman. Okay. All right. Oh, Cayman. Okay. Um, did you find it helpful? Yes. Okay. Are you on? Um, would you and like? The yeah. I I I can develop the range to a coordination and increase nice. my, my type speed in no time. Uh, would you be interested in showing everybody here in the class right now? I can make you co-host and you can share your screen. I try again the type erase and the type alenia. Type alien. Okay. Yeah. I'll send. Um, are you interested in sharing your screen and walking the class through one of these exercises today? Would you Would you like to share your screen to show everybody 
the exercises that you did? Do you know what I mean when I say share your screen? Yes, teacher. Uh, can I, I try? I can sure. do it. You got it. Okay. Uh, let's first, uh, Huafa. I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to. I'm gonna give the link to this page to everybody in the chat here, so everybody can access it. First, uh, Huafa will share her screen, and then Guadalupe. So Huafa, I'm gonna make you co-host, and then when you're finished, you can. Um, I'll make Guadalupe co-host. And then you can walk us through it. Okay. All right. So, Huafa, you are now co-host. And I just put the, uh, the URL in your, in the, uh, in the chat. So whenever you're ready, you can share your screen. Okay. I'll stop sharing mine. Okay. Uh, I forgot how I shared it. Sorry. No problem. So do you see a green arrow at the bottom? Oh, share content. That's it. Okay. Screen. There you go. Oh, you're on your phone. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, well, I can't go you, to the computer, but uh, well, the link for Zoom is only on my phone. Well, the this we're um, Wafa, we we can't do it. We can't do it with yours because this is we're sharing typing exercises. You have to be on your keyboard. <laughs> no problem. I have the okay. computer. Is is anyway? Can you send me the link? To oh, the I sent. I already sent it to everybody. So, uh, no, 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 I have the link. I don't have the, the you know, the password and the I, a million ID. I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, Guadalupe, you are, you're also co-host. You can walk us through the typing exercises. Yes, I can do it. Okay, go for it. Very good. Can you see it? Crystal clear, beautiful. All right. Perfect. So the option that, well, the game that I played was Key Man. Mm -hmm. So when you click in this option, uh, it's like you have to shoot the ships. It's very famous when, I don't know if you played when you were a child. Uh, I just, oh my God. No, that is not my game, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, type aliens, uh, sorry, sir. Okay. Type in right. aliens. That is my game. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know, what is it? Sorry for the nouns. <laughs> But it, it is what it is. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, when you play the bottom, push the bottom play, mm -hmm. you choose the level you want to play. For example, mm -hmm. in my case, I'm going to start with the level first, the first level. Mm -hmm. So, if as you can see in this in this place, there is a a word that you have to type mm -hmm. for coupon. So. And then you will show some letters. If you press T in the space bar, with the space bar, you can show the aliens. You, and if you want to move to, the, to your right, you, you have to press the type. In this case, the, I don't remember the- Semicolon. Semicolon, yeah. Semicolon, so I win. And then you, uh, you pass to another level. Now it, you are in level two. It's the same rule. Uh, you have to first of all, you have to type the word and then you can move to the left, to your right and shoot the, the, the aliens. Nice. Now, 
Mm -hmm. And that is, it's very easy and it's very fun. <laughs> Good. So you're starting at the lower level. I have a quick question. We can't see if you're looking at the keys. Are, do you have to look at the keys before you shoot or do you know where they are? I don't need to look for when I type the word, I don't look the keyboard, but, mm -hmm. but when I have to move to the right or to the left, I have to look the, the letters in the, in the keyboard. It's not the uh, same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know why, nice. because maybe because when you have a word in your mind, for example, mm -hmm. newspaper, maybe I can imagine my, my fingers in the keyboard and I can write the word. Mm -hmm. But when I see just a few letters that doesn't, don't have a relation with any word, I need to look the keyboard. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Excellent yeah. job, Guadalupe. Uh, would anybody else like to uh, share their screen to show us one of the typing games? Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, anybody else want to volunteer to share one of the, their typing games? Okay, not a problem. So what I wanted to do, thank you, Guadalupe, that was perfect. Perfect. So what I want to do now is uh, because I'm going to go back to the Google Classroom page and I want to get everyone to share comments on a message board. This is what we'll be doing the last two weeks of class because in college you'll be doing a lot of this uh, no matter what particular software you are using for your classes. So the third one down where it says uh, in the second half of class today, we've practiced our typing skills. Uh, here are, is a list of resources we will use. Now I'm going to adjust this. I'm actually, you know, I'm going to move this to the top just to make it easier. I'm going to move this to the top and I'm going to rewrite this. Okay. I'm going to say last week we broke into groups to practice typing. In a few sentences, describe your experience playing one of the games. And here is where I'd like you to describe essentially the way Guadalupe did. Guadalupe walked us through type alien and she gave us her comments. She uh, told us what was easy, what was hard, how to play. And she could write those comments right here. Uh, Fernanda can do the same. You did Kime if you wanted to describe Kime and so on and so forth. So let's right now practice everybody putting a comment here. Uh, in the Google Classroom stream. This is good practice for your online classes uh, for, at Bunker Hill Community College because very, very often the um, professor will pose a question about a reading, whatever you're reading that week, and require that everybody make a comment and then comment on one of your classmates' comments. So this is exactly what it's going to be like each week uh, at Bunker Hill. So go for it. Let's begin. I will actually, um, I'm gonna pause the recording and then I'm gonna start recording again once we've got a lot of comments posted. Here we go. So recording is paused. Okay, good job, Wafa. Now um, open up the page to level six. Okay. So just go up to where it's the classroom where it says level six. Good, oh, perfect, there's the stream. All right, now you see where it says uh, comments. There's five class comments. <clears throat> yes. Beautiful, now click five class comments. Excellent, great. That's okay, you can open it up again. Good, good job. 
Excellent. And uh, um, just for the recording sake, I'm going to turn my camera on. So everybody sees Huaf, we're looking at Huafa's screen. Huafa's walking us through. All right. Now, Huafa, do you know where to put your comment? In here, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Now make it just a few words and then see if you can press send. I'll figure out what's going on there. We see Inmar, Estefania. I practiced my typing. Like a long time. There's something simple, it's okay. Very good. Yeah. It's, you don't have to write, you're not writing the great American novel. It's okay, just a simple <laughs> comment. You know, for some reason, I cannot uh, delete because I want to collect. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Um, okay, well. Um, your delete key is not working? No, it does not use me. Hmm. Uh, what, well, it's okay. Okay. It's okay. We we know this is just for an exercise. You can now. Do you see the little paper airplane on the right hand side? No, no, no. Okay. Now, uh, do you see the paper airplane? It looks like an arrow, like this. I mean, you see my camera. I'm... I cannot see your camera. Okay. Uh, to, in your in your chat box there, do you see the little arrow, the the paper airplane? That's how you post it. No, 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 no. Uh, yes, but up, up, where next to the one you just wrote. Okay, this one. That's the one. So when you're ready, boom, success. That's it. Excellent. Now, since we're still on your screen. I want, uh, I'd like it if Huafa can make a comment on someone else's post, to just show everybody how to do that. Uh, choose anyone else's post. You can choose Inmar, Franceles, Estefania, and show everybody how to. So what you want to do is you see how when you, there it is, perfect, good. You're going to. No, 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 don't, <laughs> don't click the report. <laughs> There's nothing wrong, nothing wrong with Fred Celeste. So. <laughs> okay. No, that's okay. Hmm. No, there's no, uh, that's interesting. Oh, it's not letting you comment directly. Okay. Anyway, it's just the chat box at the bottom. Okay, that's good for me to see. I thought you could comment directly. Looks like I'm the only one who can comment directly. All right, so good job, everybody. This is an exercise on how to use a chat board uh, with Google Classroom. And you'll be doing this a lot, a lot uh, with these college classes. And usually it'll be timed. Usually your professor will say, we're reading this essay. I need your comment by tomorrow and I need a comment on another student's comment. And you'll have to post your comments by a certain day and that's how the professor will uh, grade your assignment. So uh, it's good exercise because it helps you be mindful of grammar mistakes. Uh, it helps you be more, it, it helps you think before you share something, which I think a lot more people need to do. It, 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 this kind of thing helps you become more of a, a conscious internet user, because most people who share information on the internet don't use their brain before they press, before they actually post something. So this that kind of exercise is good. Write something, read what you wrote first, make sure it's relevant, and then share. So simple exercise, but a very good exercise. Good Should job, everybody. Yes. Uh, so, uh, because the, that uh, the option of not available to share a comment with the student, so what mm -hmm. uh, should be a pop up in the three point uh, to to be uh, uh, share the um, comment with the other student? Oh well, well you can. Um, you just have a, you just have you can't comment it directly to the student. It would just be a comment on the bottom that everybody else would read it. Yeah. 
So is, is there is the option for a specific student to share a comment for a specific student? Your, your email option, you could do that. I'll show you. You can email anyone in Google Classroom because everybody's Gmail account is there. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, but but the um, you wouldn't be able to privately message a student because this on because it's a public message board. It's for everybody to read. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yep. Good question. Very good question. All right, so let's move on. So yes, we'll do a lot more of this type of thing throughout the rest of the last couple of weeks. Now, moving back here. All right, good job, every everybody. So it looks like everyone has gotten their typing practice in and has reviewed these typing exercises. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this question and I'm going to move it to the top because this will be the next uh, question that we will be commenting on, and it's related to technology. Um, before we get into this technology, we're going to review what we looked at last week. So in relationship to in relation to typing, what I showed everybody last week was this. Several of you saw this in my level five class. It's one thing I like to review. Some people started uh, texting on a phone before learning how to type formally. It depends on when you were born, where you grew up, all types of different things. For instance, uh, I grew up uh, in America and in the 1990s, there were actual typing classes in middle school and high school. It, it was this formal training that was standard basic education. Uh, Americans today don't get typing classes. Uh, largely, the assumption is because if kids grow up with the technology, they must know how to use the technology, uh, which is, which I've given you my opinion on before. There's plenty of technology that we use every day that we don't understand. So yes, you'll see a lot of uh, young kids in high school today typing with two fingers like this because they've never learned where the home keys are. But the more interesting question that we looked at was where the setup for this keyboard came from. And we looked at this video last week showing the origins of the QWERTY keyboard. I'm gonna revisit that video today, but I've got specific questions. And for a listening exercise, I need four volunteers. So here we go. Whoever wants to show off their listening skills. All right. The first question is, why might the QWERTY keyboard be overrated? <clears throat> Who would like to volunteer for to answer this question? Throw an all shout out at once. Guadalupe, you got it. So Guadalupe will take the first question. So I'll put Guadalupe. Guadalupe will take question number one. Question number two, what was the significance of Union Typewriter Company? Union Typewriter Company. Francellus, you got it. Francellus will take number two. And number three, how did typing classes standardize the QWERTY keyboard? Um, and I'll explain this vocab word, standardize. When I underline the word standard, what, is that, what, it, what, what does that mean to everybody? What's a standard? The same model. Exactly, exactly. So the, the introduction of typing classes is what standardized the, the keyboard. The quality of the time. Well, the quality is what we're going to debate. The, the quality is very much in question. Is the, the setup of the QWERTY keyboard, the keys where they are on every single keyboard all around the world for the last 200 years, is that really the best setup? Because remember last week, um, 
I pose the question, people who use, who, who read and write in different languages are forced to learn the QWERTY keyboard. People who don't even use the Roman alphabet are forced to learn the QWERTY keyboard, typing in Arabic and Chinese and in Cyrillic. And so the whole world is forced to type their own language through this American system. Why is that? That's the larger question. Um, how did typing classes standardize the QWERTY keyboard? Uh, Marvat, you want that one, you got it. Marvat. And the last question, the creator of the original creator of the QWERTY keyboard, later in his career, he designed a totally different keyboard that he thought was a better idea. So, and the last name of this designer is Scholes. Why did Scholes want to change his original design? Who wants question number four? I see a lot more people have just joined the classroom. Rossi, uh, Carrie, Belkis, anybody? Carrie, you got it. So, Carrie, you will take question number four. All right. Why might the QWERTY keyboard be overrated? Guadalupe, question number one. Number two, what was the significance of the Union Typewriter Company? That's Francellis. Question number two. Number three, how did typing classes standardize the QWERTY keyboard, Marvat? Number four, why did Scholes want to change his original design? That's Carrie. Okay, uh, take a minute. If anybody wants to do a, a screenshot or just write down their question on paper, take a minute and everybody tell me when you're ready. Ready, Tisha. Okay. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a little quick screenshot of, uh, whoops, not that, hang on a second, I'm going to move up this, here we go, take a little quick screenshot of this as well. Okay, there we go. Okay, here we go. Why does every keyboard look like this? The QWERTY keyboard is overrated. Okay, so this top strip here, there is a 99% chance that on your keyboard, it's Q-W-E-R-T-Y, QWERTY. We all have these QWERTY keyboards. There's probably even one in your pocket on a screen. But why? Why is this pattern of letters so familiar? This, of course, is the keyboard. But why, of course? QWERTY was just one person's invention from the 1870s. It's almost 140 years old, yet it's still the standard. All of these machines are alike in many respects. We all use it, but don't know why. That's the definition of overrated. And it turns out that this little keyboard is the subject of intense debate, some lies you've probably been told before, and a few real explanations that might surprise you, including an old fashioned cartel. Lots of people have tried to arrange these jumbled letters. There was a half century period of indecision, debate. In the 1840s, Hughes Printing Telegraph arranged the keys like a piano keyboard. Or look at Hansen's writing ball from 1865. People's fingers pecked at this thing. The letters varied per version, but they showed up in this pattern. This 1868 typewriter looks weird too, but it was the start of something. The inventor was Christopher Latham Scholes. He looked like typewriter Santa Claus, and he kept going. 
1870, he developed a pattern like this. As of 1873, he'd come up with a keyboard that looked a lot like QWERTY. But there were quirks. Notice that period where the R should be, and the A and Z are flipped. The M also sits next to the L. Remington, a company that made machines for shooting and sewing, bought the design. Suddenly, they were in the typewriter business. The design Scholes patented in 1878 was basically QWERTY. Along with the numbers, the only weirdness is that M next to the L and the C and X are flipped compared to a contemporary keyboard. The company that made Remington typewriters was soon sending out sales packets with the QWERTY we know and love. But that doesn't quite explain how QWERTY got big. There are urban legends, ones that QWERTY was designed that way to keep typewriter keys from jamming. But lots of designs could do that, and there's not a lot of good evidence that that's why QWERTY was designed. Other options were even still around in 1890, like the Merritt typewriter. You moved this handle to the right spot for your letter and pressed down. The letters weren't in QWERTY, they were in a big long strip that looked like this. So it was a coupe hitch keyboard. Many typists believed it worked as well as QWERTY, but the best evidence of all that QWERTY wasn't the perfect design might be this invention from 1889. The keyboard? Not QWERTY, but Xpimture. The inventor? Christopher Latham Scholes, the guy who invented QWERTY. He created it just before he died. Even the creator of QWERTY wasn't settled on QWERTY. And that's where the cartel comes in. Look at this king. He has something to do with QWERTY. See the label on his crown? Trusts. In the 1890s, many companies merged into trusts that allowed them to fix prices and control markets. In 1893, that happened with typewriters, when some of the biggest manufacturers came together to form Union Typewriter Company. Manufacturers cared most about price and technical improvements, like how the typewriter worked. But there was another effect of the trust. The biggest company made Remington typewriters, and they used Scholz's QWERTY keyboard design. The trust did the same. Most experts think the trust didn't work to fix prices. It had trouble beating innovative competitors, but their market power did fix a pattern on the keyboard. And there's one more reason why that pattern stuck. Look at these old typewriter ads, or these early typists. Now you might notice that most of these students are women. That is worth noting, but for the story of QWERTY, it's more important to notice that they're in a class, together. Typing wasn't like it is today, where you get one of these at the office, or one of these when you're born. Typists trained. They took classes. If you took a class, you took it for the most common keyboard. That was QWERTY. People still debate whether QWERTY's the best. Some say the 1930s Dvorak keyboard is better. Others say it too is overrated. Whether it's the best system or not, QWERTY isn't going anywhere anytime soon. How you type is more important than what you type. This is the mark of a good typist. All right, everybody. So everyone's had a nice week to process that. And now they've broken it up into individual questions. And I took a screenshot of who is answering the individual questions. Here we go. All right. There we are. I'm making, I'm throwing my screenshot up there to replace this. All right, there we go. All right, so first question, Guadalupe. Why might the QWERTY keyboard be overrated? Because everybody uses it, but nobody know why. Exactly. Great job. Yeah, everybody uses it and doesn't even think about it. Absolutely. Nice. Um, 
has anyone ever been told that the keyboard is the way it is because it's it's great? I was told that in uh, I think the first time like early elementary school. I think yeah, it was a couple of kids were saying, "Hey, why is the keyboard set up like this?" And the teacher just kind of blindly started saying, "Oh, this is by far the best way uh, that." Uh, keys could be arranged for blah 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 and just kind of making stuff up but and I don't know I was I was told this kind of nonsense that it's it's good because it's good it, it, it is the way the world is the way it is because it's supposed to be that way that's <laughs> overrated yeah all right number two what was the significance of the union typewriter company Francellis Um, teacher, I don't got it too much. <laughs> no problem. The answer, but um, it's like uh, something will happen at this time. Um, the company, mm -hmm. company I'm writing a word to help you. Yes, I companies merge like um into a a, a trust, so they yes. try to fix the prices and the contract market. And so exactly. they were scared like more about the prices and they and how work the the machines. I think exactly. Exactly. So the, the word for <clears throat> so a union typewriter company, there are all these small companies that made typewriters like Underwood and Remington. And if all these companies are on their own, they're competing against each other. So if different typewriter companies are competing against each other, what's going to happen to the price? Price is the price going to go up or go down? Everybody, if if there's competition, do prices go up or go down? Go down. You go know, down, right? <clears throat> That's the way capitalism works. So market forces, all these different typewriter companies are working against each other. They're going to compete say, oh, I've got this for this price. I've got this for this price. But if every single typewriter company is bought up by a trust, a trust is, a fan, is an old fashioned way to say a corporation. And one union typewriter company is producing all typewriters everywhere. <clears throat> they can do exactly what Francella said. And that's called fixed prices. Fixed prices like a monopoly. And when a group of big companies come together to fix prices for one commodity, that is called a, I circled the word right there. Cartel, that's the definition of a cartel. Okay, I'm listening to total silence. All right, but that is the definition of a cartel. Group of companies selling the same product and fixing the prices on that product. Um, for anybody from the Middle East, anybody know what this is? Yes, teacher. All right, tell everybody Marvat. Uh, OPEC, it's the um, um, like organization um, organized the price of the oil and all the country that the product uh, of the oil. Yes, yes. So OPEC works that way. It's a group, it's a collection of companies that produce, uh, I'm sorry, countries that produce oil and together they set the prices for that product. So when the price of oil is up and down, get, when you're putting gas in your car, the fluctuating prices right now gas is super expensive two years ago gas was getting cheaper that is opec determining the price how much is pumped at one time that's essentially the way union typewriter company worked all the typewriter companies were under one big trust corporation they would produce all the typewriters and set a price all right good job everybody oh and marvat you've got the next question question number three 
yes. Um, uh, there is the different uh, pattern of the keyboard uh, during the time uh, appear and changes with the time. But the perfect design of Shala's quarter design make it most common and too over, uh, overrated. And many companies, typing companies, like this design and adopt it. Very nice. Very nice. Yes. So once there are typing classes, that became a brand new business. Uh, there were entire schools opened up uh, for typing classes. And um, also noteworthy, uh, the typing class became uh, essentially a career path for a lot of women in the workplace in Western countries. Um, so if you have typing classes and you have a cartel controlling the prices of all typewriters, there's really not a lot of chance for a different design of keyboard to make it into the market. Good job, Marvat. Uh, Kerry, last question. Why did Scholes want to change his ori original design? The creator of Corti didn't like it. He wanted to change it. Because he wasn't settled on it. Mm -hmm. He like, wasn't sure that it was the best that it could produce. So he kept, he kept trying and trying yeah. before dying. <laughs> it's true. I, I find that the most interesting part of the story. The creator of Corti, he sold his design. He could have just, you know, lived, enjoyed his design. Yeah, I'm famous. I made the keyboard. He didn't like it. He said, no, I can do better. And before he died, he's like, this is better. Try this. <laughs> anyway, so that's the story of the Corti keyboard. Good job, everybody. It's time for a break. Okay. 10 minute break, everyone. All right, 10 minute break. Okay, take a break, everybody. Relax for a bit.
All right, everybody, we are back. So going to revisit this. So just give me a uh, hand up emoji to let me know you have returned. Great, Carrie, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Great, I see most hands up. Wonderful, wonderful, excellent. Okay, so knowing now what we know about the keyboard and why it's designed the way it is worldwide. What about other de designs that have become a part of our life, lives? For instance, cars, technology is changing with cars. People are talking about electric vehicles. <clears throat> why, did, why were fossil fuels the way people powered cars for so many years to begin with? Was that really the best way? What about the way we cool and heat our homes? This is technology we take for granted, but is it really the best technology? So these are bigger questions that I'm asking everybody for breakout room discussion right now. The question I'm gonna put here at the left side of the screen is the most common design the best best design before we go into breakout rooms I want to make sure everybody understands what I'm asking what does that mean is the most common design the best What do I mean by that? Uh, sorry, you are saying, you're asking mm -hmm. or? I am asking, that's, a, that's a question. The most common design. I, yeah, what is that? What do I mean by that? Like in the most common thing you are yeah. using, like uh, I, iPhone is the most common phone. There you go. Is the best phone. Exactly. Anything, but it, but be. is it the best phone? Is it? Yeah. Why? Perhaps. iPhone is one example. What about uh, other examples? I gave keyboard. The design of a keyboard is the most common. Is it really the best? What about anything? Think of any design. Is it the best? Any design in the world? <clears throat> because the world we're, we're living in a in a built environment where, where just about everything, if you look around you, wherever you are, even if you're homeless and you're living in a cardboard box, that cardboard box was designed by someone. Is it really the best? <clears throat> everything around us in a built environment was designed by someone else. And things that we see every single day may or may not work as well as they could be working. So that's what I mean, is the most common design the best design? Just because we see something and we accept it to be the standard, is, does that mean it is the very best? So, jo yeah. George, I, I think this is a, a best design because imagine it's the different design. It's the mm -hmm. confusion. 
Mm -hmm. I I can develop the coordination. <laughs> oh, can you give me an example, Fernanda? Yes, uh, for, when just, I finally I, I talked about phones. What what example are you giving? And momentarily, I use cell phone. Okay, but can then you give the uh, another design keyboard. Yes, and the keyboard I mm -hmm. I develop it ran two way. Mm -hmm. Can you give another I, example? I, I, I started in typing else? cell phone and iPhone. Okay, we've got phones, we've got keyboards. Give us another example, Fernanda, something else. Furniture in your home, anything. I, I, I start, I, I learn typing mm -hmm. in computer. For well, me, it's more 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 easy because mm -hmm. I I have more co coordination and the cell phone. <laughs> okay, it's more fast. I I type it more more fast in computer. No, and the, mm -hmm. because keep on, keep on. I have more coordination. <laughs> now I'm not asking about computer specifically. I'm talking about anything, anything in the world. Okay, and the example. Anything. I see in teacher that the, the a keyboard that the Chrome is common. Well, that's not the question. So this, this is why I'm pausing here. I haven't gone to breakout rooms because I don't think everybody understands the question I'm asking. Uh, Estefania understands because she gave an example. Nobody else is giving an example. What's the question that I'm asking here? It's for example, t-shirt, uh, bikes, bike, bikes with two wheels. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Are more common than the bikes with one wheel. Exactly. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. So that's what I'm talking about. So before you go into breakout rooms, open your minds up. Think about design of various things that are very common in the world and think, are they really the best or could they be better? It would be strange for us to relearn how to um, all learn how to ride a bike on one wheel. That would that would be a lot of work for everybody to learn how to ride a unicycle because we we ride bikes with two wheels. We learn when we're young to ride a bike. We ride a bike to work. It's cheaper and better for the environment than driving a car or whatever. But what if we all started riding unicycles? It would take up less space. You could take it into the building with you very easily. You could keep it in your, if you have a small apartment, this would be no problem. Why don't we all just start riding unicycles? That would be super weird, but would it be better? So this is, this is what I'm talking about. Just because a design is common, is it the best? That's the question I want everybody to answer. I'm not only talking about keyboards. I'm trying to make sure everybody understands the question I'm asking, okay? Everybody ready for breakout rooms? Yes, Great, great, great. So yes. try to discuss this question. Is the most common design the best design? Just because something is common, is it always the best? All right. Breakout room time.
Okay, everybody. Um, these are two commercials. They're two American commercials from the year 1984. And this was a big competition for technology uh, almost 40 years ago. <clears throat> one was this product and one was this product. Who could tell me what, it, what uh, this product is, the VHS? See, so, yeah, I knew it. More English is spoken when I'm when I'm gone. Uh, I'll just find a volunteer. Uh, Estefania, what's a VHS? Uh, it's a old machine, and you can uh, play. You use that you used to for play videos or yeah. record. Or you can use that for record or just for play. I don't know. I never had one, so yeah. I had but, you, one. but you're familiar. You're familiar with it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Are you but, sure you didn't use? <laughs> man, you cannot record. You just play. No, you can record. Yes. Oh, cool. Yes, yes you can. Well, so you can record. <laughs> not, there's a couple of acronyms here. Uh, the machine is called uh, as another acronym. But this is for the machine. This thing. But the uh, what you put in the machine, these things, mm -hmm. that's the VHS. Yes. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> all right, Belkis, tell us all about these. What is a VHS? Um, tell us everything. Did were they popular in the DR when you were growing when you were? Um, Living in the DR. So it's cassette uh, contain a, a tape or film or mm -hmm. another show. Yeah. You no, can use this mm -hmm. this machine, video machine. Yeah. No, about you were. Um, I know in in Iraq uh, there were there were limitations probably when you were growing up on who could have mobile phones, right? Yeah, this is in the 19th century, but after the 2000th century, yeah. Yeah, but after the 2003, everything, we get it. Well, in, um, under, when Saddam Hussein was in power, did, did people have this technology or no? Yes, yes. Yes, at that okay. time, yes. This is, uh, this is permission, but the internet, mobile phone is not permission. Okay, just phones. What about computers? Yeah. Um, yes, there okay. is a computer at that time. So computers, yes. VHS, TV, yes. Phones with the internet, no. Yeah, TV just the two channel for the Iraq channel, not more. Okay, all right. Um, so you you did grow up with familiar with these machines. They were like people wanted to watch movies. They could go find movies or or record something on TV. They could record it on a VHS. Yes. In Iraq. Yes. Okay. So, Belkis, I, I, I remember yeah. that, that this machine used um, tapes and LP or disc. A disc, oh yeah, the DVD would replace yeah. the VHS. Yeah. DVDs quickly replaced DVD, uh, VHSs like in the 90s and 2000s. Yeah. And now we don't really use DVDs that much. People stream what they want or record it on a little um, USB stick. So that's an example of technology constantly changing. But um, let's see, let's get it. So Belkis recalled this and uh, grew up with this in the DR. Uh, Rossi, in Venezuela, were these common when you were growing up? Let's get uh, let's get another perspective. Guadalupe, uh, when you were growing up in Mexico City, um, did you have a VHS machine and a VCR? 
I had I had once and I didn't know the difference about uh, the equipment. But I, actually I have some of some cassettes right now in my mother's house. Nice. About nice. my sister party. <laughs> So it's My, very yeah. fun to, to watch the those movies. <laughs> the, yeah, there are a few old cassettes at my dad's home, even though the, there's not a working player to play them. My dad hasn't actually thrown away a few old cassettes. Um, yeah. Does anybody else actually have old VHS cassettes at home? Yes, in DR, we have, we have all the movies from Disney. <laughs> Oh, oh nice. yeah, nice. right, <laughs> Cinderella. Yes, <laughs> my mom nice. has Cool. I had now, another one, but my my cousin had one, and I saw a lot of horror movie. What movies did you first watch, Mar, on on a VHS? Uh, uh, for example, uh, the the Predator, Predator. Predator, yeah, yeah. I remember Predator. Yeah. Oh, and, and some Mexican movies, uh, Ladrones de Tumba. Hmm. Did yeah. you ever see uh, El Mariachi? <laughs> or, um, my, I think my one of my first Mexican movies I watched was uh, in the 2000s. I watched Amores Peros. Anybody familiar with it? Okay, never mind. Um, with Guy Garcia. Yes. Really good. He's, he started directing in the US, now he does a lot of animation now. Um, anyway, so that's beside the point. Sorry, I was going off on a tangent. So, all right, so just from conversations with this class, this technology was released late 70s, became more common in the early 80s. Um, how did it disrupt entertainment? Well, before a home recording device uh, you had to go to a physical play, uh, uh, a location to watch a movie, movie theaters. You had to also um, watch events live. <clears throat> so a lot of the same uh, debates about entertainment today, like for instance, right now we're living during the streaming wars, you know, Amazon Prime, HBO Max, Netflix are all in competition with each other. And the only real reason to watch a live TV program is sports or news, live breaking news. So the record, the home recording device meant people could have a little bit of that convenience, the way we use Netflix or whatever we stream on the internet today. We watch what we want, when we want. This, this technology was the beginning of that. We don't have to be glued to our couches to watch the soccer game we can record it watch it next week if we want so this was a game changer people who produced entertainment felt threatened and uh, next week you're going to learn about an actual supreme court case um, that the movie industry uh, have actually started to sue the creators of these devices over entertainment rights but That'll be for next week. Today, I'm going to introduce a technology that lost the uh, home recording device war, and that is the Betamax. VHS was first produced by a company called uh, JVC. JVC produced the first VHSs, and then there were Zenith and other uh, brands that started reproducing this and it was home device you could go rent a movie buy a movie at a store watch the movie at home like uh, Francelis watch still has those Disney movies all that was a game changer the competition of the VHS tape was from so it was from Japan a Japanese company created beta that would be played by a new device called the Betamax. Who wants to guess which company in Japan was producing this technology? Sony. 
Sony. Sony. <laughs> it was kind of easy. I was like, I was like, man, if they're not getting this right, they're not looking at the screen. Yes, good. <laughs> I, I put it there. So yes. So I'm going to show these two TV commercials from 1984. They're essentially serving the same function. It's a cassette of whatever you want to watch and a device to play it on your TV at home. Watch what you want, when you want. They both can record off of the TV. So if this was 1984 and you're looking at getting some kind of device in your home to watch videos, which one do you think you would want? I'm going to play the VHS and then I'm going to play the the beta and i want to hear who thinks one is better than the other we know who won this competition but let's go back in time it's 38 years ago which one looks better let's first watch the vhs commercial what would you call a video recorder that has everything I'm calling smart. It's a Zenith VHS with extraordinary VHS Hi-Fi stereo. Smart. Plus a remote that can control both the deck and the TV. Control is both. That's smart. And clear special effects. Smart. One of the new smart decks, Zenith's VHS video recorders. When you want everything. Very smart. Okay, that's the first one. Uh, is anybody convinced that they want to pay? These were expensive when they first came out. They want to pay, you know, like $150, a lot of money to get one of these things in those days. Who here has decided they want to spend half of their, you know, biweekly paycheck on one of these things? Anybody convinced? Not me. Not me. <laughs> This was, this was what people were thinking about. Like today, people spend, you know, a month's salary on a phone and it's normal. Um, with, and that was a weird, weird thing to do, you know, eight years ago, but now that's become a common thing. So the technology that would basically, if, if you were, imagine if you're a burglar and you're gonna break into somebody's house, the technology, the thing you're gonna take is that VCR because that's the most valuable piece of technology. This is before everybody had a computer. If you're looking at video cassette recorders and you're confused by all your choices, just look at the most important feature of all, the picture. And Sony Betamax records a sharper picture than VHS. That's not just our opinion. In tests throughout the country, more people said the picture was sharper with Sony Betamax than VHS. So why doesn't anyone else talk sharper picture? Because no one else can. Betamax, a sharper picture. All right, so that's a commercial for Betamax. Who wants to spend a whole bunch of money to go out and buy one of these? No, not me. <laughs> okay, nobody's convinced. Now, there was a particular message that the Betamax commercial had that was not wrong. The What's, images is the, yeah. is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. The images, there was a much more clear picture on the screen of a beta tape. Uh, so much so that, um, does anybody here have a video projector at home? No. Not me. So much so that yes, and then my my graduation, mm -hmm. <laughs> my degree. Uh, beta. Even though people didn't buy beta tapes regularly to have in their home, uh, filmmakers, if anybody was going to make a, a recording early videotapes, if they wanted an image projected onto a wall in a movie theater, if you hooked up a Betamax to a video projector, the screen would show a much clearer picture on the wall than if you hooked up a VCR from playing a VHS tape on the wall. The, the picture would have less clarity. It would be a much clearer picture. So the picture, uh, there re really was no doubt that the picture on Beta was a better picture. Uh, that's not in debate. There's no debate about that. There were more pic what we now call pixels, 
but they, these weren't pixels because they were digitized. They were they were on actual tape. Um, why would well let's say which in this battle between VHS and beta, let's say like today's uh, Amazon Prime versus Netflix, who was the clear winner? VHS or beta? Who won? Beta. Um, VHS. VHS. VHS won. Right. And it's ironic because I, I VHS won because in terms of not in terms of quality because beta had better quality images but vhs won a better because, publicity yeah just look at this classroom i i'm just looking at the names uh i just let's just look at the countries represented here so people who grew up in iraq um honduras venezuela the dominican republic haiti all grew up knowing about the VHS. Or no, if you didn't have one, you knew somebody who had one. So we, we've got multiple countries represented all growing up with this technology on the left. How many of you had a Betamax growing up? First of all, I had a beta. You did, yes. When, <laughs> cool. And then when we went to Blackbuster or something like that, most of yes. the movies were in VHS, so we have to buy a VHS. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Thank you so much for sharing that, Guadalupe. People were buying a few of these, they were, but if you wanted more selection, when you wanted to go to Blockbuster to get the movie that you want, you're not gonna get it in beta. Uh, does this sound familiar? Any, do you see any similarities to the QWERTY keyboard here? It's about the publicity or? Exactly, exactly, Estefania. Beautiful, exactly. So yes, so Beta produced a better quality product, but more people were buying the VHS. And there are some drawbacks to the Beta that we're gonna learn about next week. So just because the screen was the the picture on the screen was better with a beta there were other reasons that people wanted to buy vhs uh guadalupe said there's more selection because all these home videos are coming out on vhs blockbuster has nothing in in beta great great example uh, and there's going to be other reasons we're going to look at why did vhs win with a with a lower quality product so they had a low, uh, a worse product that everybody wanted and they won. And we're gonna look at why that happened next week. But to give you a preview, take a look, whoops, at, let me stop sharing my screen. Going back to where we started, the Google Classroom stream. Okay, so this is the question I wrote right here. Is the most popular technology always the best? Compare the VHS and beta competition of the 1980s. Here we have a video that you can watch. And we all, I'm sorry, video you can watch. And we also have an article that we will read together. And after we, after you read and watch this, I wanna get everybody's comment uh, here in the Google Classroom stream. And that'll be for Thursday. So that's, gonna, that's how I'm going to wrap up class for today. And uh, one thing I want to point out, uh, do we have any questions? That's the end of class today. So this is what, you, if you want to get a head start, you can look at this on Google Classroom. Any questions? No, George. All right. Wonderful, wonderful. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Now, uh, tomorrow morning, you're all invited to a banking workshop hosted by the First Republic Bank. So, uh, yes, I have a question. Yes. 
the meeting with Antonio and uh, Mariana is the next week? Yes. On Monday? Yes, but, mm -hmm. on yes. Tuesday? And my, that will actually be Monday, but that's actually not for everybody. I'm I'm putting everyone in a single WhatsApp group for that. Okay. So I, that's why I haven't mentioned that here. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So yes, uh, tomorrow morning, you are all invited to a uh, banking workshop host, uh, and hosted by uh, people from uh, First Republic Bank. Many of you have done this already. If you can make it, great. I posted that link on Google Classroom and in the WhatsApp group. So that's tomorrow, 10.30 a.m. If there are no questions, we can wrap things up here. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thank you, George. Bye.